SketchUp is a great application for creating 3D previs models without needing to earn an engineering degree before you can begin using it. As you'll see in our main previs course, it's the perfect way to quickly block out a film set. So take the next few minutes of this survival guide to get up and running as fast as possible. Let's get right to it. There's a free web version of SketchUp and a dedicated desktop application called SketchUp Make, also free. But at the time we recorded this, the web version was unable to export models to Unreal Engine, so we'll be working with the desktop version here, SketchUp Make. Start by choosing a template from the welcome screen. We're focused on using SketchUp for simple modeling, so we'll choose a simple template. If you live in the US, you might be tempted to choose feet and inches, but to avoid a whole lot of confusion when moving to other software like Unreal Engine for previs, it's best to stick to meters. But don't sweat it, SketchUp will still let you enter values in feet and inches when needed. Click Start Using SketchUp. As you're learning, there's a handy instructor pane. Click on a tool in the main toolbar and the instructor explains what it's for and how to use it. If you close the instructor pane, you can access it again by clicking this question mark. The tools you see are only a subset of all the available tools, but cover most of what we'll need to do to create previous models. To add additional tools to the toolbar, choose View, Customize Toolbar, and then drag what you need into the toolbar. To get back to the defaults, just drag the entire default bar at the bottom. Now, time for a quick detour into Photoshop. The first thing you need is a basic floor plan of the set you'll be working on. We'll be working with a basic house floor plan. Now, it can be anything from a sketch on a napkin to a detailed diagram. The important thing is that the dimensions are proportionally accurate and that you know and annotate the real world measurement of at least one feature of the plan. OK, back to SketchUp. We need to create a shape with dimensions that match our floor plan so we can get everything to scale. In our case, we have a floor plan with a room we know to be 35 feet from wall to wall. Let's select the rectangle tool to create a reference rectangle. Mouse over the center point of the scene where our stand-in person is waiting patiently. When your mouse gets close to the center point, it'll snap to it, indicated by this circle. Click and drag out a rectangle along the ground plane. If it starts creating a wall instead of a floor, just move your mouse further back until it snaps to the ground plane. Here's the important point. Don't worry about size right now. At lower right, you'll see the dimensions field. We know we want it to be 35 feet wide, so we'll replace the metric width with 35 and the single quote character, the standard abbreviation for foot. At this point, your shape has probably disappeared off the screen somewhere. Now's a good time to learn how to navigate around the scene. The simplest method, albeit a little tedious, is to select from the three navigation tools at the top of the interface. One for rotating around the screen, one for panning around it, and one for zooming in and out. There's also a handy Zoom Extents tool for quickly framing everything if you get a little lost. Now these tools are fine, but if you have a three button mouse, you can use the middle mouse button to rotate, the shift key with the middle mouse button to pan, and the mouse scroll wheel to zoom. It saves you from constantly clicking different tool icons. Frame the view so you can see the rectangle. We only care about the width, so don't worry about what size you set the other dimension to. Now we'll bring up floor plan in, choose file, Import, choose all supported image types to see any available images on your drive, and import your floor plan image. SketchUp wants you to place the image, so click somewhere to set its corner location and then drag out to roughly size it. Don't worry about being too precise just yet. Use those middle mouse and shift middle mouse keyboard shortcuts to comfortably position the view. Now use the move and scale tools. Press M for the Move tool, S for the Scale tool, to size and align the floor plan to match our reference rectangle. Now whenever you want to go back to the regular Select tool, just press the spacebar. 
In our case, we just want to line up the wall distance labeled 35 feet with the 35 foot edge of our rectangle. Unfortunately, the rectangle is completely obscured by our floor plan. So that we can clearly see both overlapping items, choose View, Face Style, X-Ray. A ghosted version of our rectangle is now visible on the floor plan. Be careful not to lift the floor plan off the ground plane as you align it. You can always press Command Z on a Mac or Control Z on a PC to undo. If you find SketchUp is snapping imprecisely, choose Window, Model Info, and in the Units section, deselect Enable Length Snapping. You can also choose how fine your adjustments are by changing the precision options. This will allow you to smooth the amount to which you can adjust elements in the viewer. Now, unfortunately, it won't change the snapping behavior when you come to scaling things. So when scaling, you'll need to dial in the right size by manually entering precise scaling values in the lower right corner of the screen. Once you've lined things up, you no longer need the reference rectangle, so switch back to the standard Select tool, then double-click the rectangle to select all of its parts, and press Delete. Turn off X-ray viewing for now. You now have a floor plan correctly scaled to sketch up units. Use the Move tool to slide the image around as a sanity check to confirm that the default human figure seems to proportionally match the scale of the floor plan. You can place the floor plan wherever you like now that it's scaled correctly, although it's probably a good idea to stick one of the corners in the center point of the scene. All right, now's a good time to save your SketchUp scene, just in case. When you're happy, right-click the figure and choose Erase. We don't want to bring it with us into the Previs application. Like Photoshop, SketchUp uses layers to separate out elements. We'll use layers to separate our walls from the floor plan. Open the Layers window, click the Add button, and rename the new layer to Walls. Click the Select toggle to select the Walls layer. Now, as we create walls, they'll be added to this layer and not the floor plans layer. Now it's time to build out the room. In our example previous exercise, we'll be shooting in the main living room area, so that's the only part of the scene we need to build out. Let's start with the front wall. Select the Rectangle tool and drag a rectangle out to match the entry walls. Just extend to the corners but not past. You'll see why in a moment. If at any point you accidentally move the floor plan, just press Command Z to undo on a Mac, Control Z on a PC. Now select the Push Pull tool. Click on the rectangle face and pull it up to create a wall. Click the mouse again to complete the pull operation. Our location has nine foot ceilings, so we'll type nine single quote and press enter. You actually don't even need to click into the distance box at lower right. SketchUp will automatically enter the value and set your correct wall height. By the way, for previs, it's essential that you match the ceiling height when you create the walls. For convenience of placement, we won't actually add a ceiling here in SketchUp, but we want to make sure that we don't end up planning camera angles that would require punching a hole in the roof on the real set. If the dimensions weren't perfectly lined up, you can select individual faces and use the Move tool to adjust them. To avoid snapping back to the starting position, try dragging beyond the adjustment, releasing the mouse, and then dragging back to where you want the wall to be aligned. Now it's time to create a wall around the corner. We'll use the Push-Pull tool again, but this time we'll press the Alt or Option key to toggle to New Starting Face Mode. What this means is that SketchUp will create a seam in the wall at the current location of the edge we're pushing out. Now this can be a little confusing because most applications use the Alt or Option key as a modifier with other key commands. Here it's used as a toggle. Each time you press the key, it switches the mode. You'll know you're in New Starting Face mode by the small plus that appears next to the mouse pointer icon. Click the edge of the wall and pull it past the corner to the outside edge of the house. Click the mouse again to complete the operation. Notice the seam created because we were in New Starting Face mode. Now pull out the small created rectangle that matches the profile of the next wall we need to build. You should still have the Push-Pull tool active. If not, select it again and then drag out the rectangle. 
If you need to adjust your view while working, you can temporarily middle click to rotate and shift middle click to pan the view without stepping out of the push pull tool. Click the mouse again to complete the pull. Press Alt or Option again to return to New Starting Face Mode indicated by the plus icon. Now select the new rectangle and pull it out. Continue to repeat this operation to complete all your walls. When you get back to the starting wall, just close the gap. You'll probably see some overlap and that's okay. It won't show up in our previous. Time to add room for doors and windows. To see what we're doing better, we'll choose X-Ray from the View menu again. Use the Rectangle tool again and let it snap to the bottom wall line. Drag out to the approximate width in the floor plan and an approximate height. Now our doorways are 6 foot 8 inches tall, so we'll enter that and cut out the doorway, select the Push Pull tool and push the created rectangle through the wall until it snaps to the other side. When you release the mouse, SketchUp will automatically cut away the door. Windows require a little more work to position correctly. A good method is to measure the real window from floor to top and then measure the window height. In SketchUp, you can create a rectangle from the floor level up to that first measurement and then create a second rectangle from there down that matches the overall window height. Then use the push pull tool to push only the windows rectangle through to create the hole. We're not interested in adding actual door and window detail here in SketchUp. We can do that in the previous app on Real Engine. For now, we just need the appropriate holes cut. In our case, all our walls are at right angles. But what happens if you have an angled wall or a curved one? Well, for angled walls, extend out the wall at right angles, and then grab the Move tool and move the wall edges to align the wall as needed. For curved walls, start by creating the connecting walls on either side. Now select the Two Point Arc tool. Click on a starting point, then an ending point, and then drag the center to create the curve. Click to finish. Repeat for the other side of the wall. And then finally, use the push-pull tool to raise to the correct height. All right, we're almost ready to export to use for previs, but first we'll assign some textures. Now we'll change these out once we're in Unreal Engine, but these will serve as placeholders. Let's first make those walls solid again. Now open the Materials window. We could choose basic colors, but let's make things interesting by throwing on a few textures. Click to the Textures section of the Colors pane, choose a subcategory, and start dragging textures onto walls. We're actually going to garishly assign different textures to each wall. We'll replace them all in Unreal Engine, but by giving a unique texture to each wall, we're making room to customize them individually when we are in Unreal Engine, if we so choose. This also generates something called a UV map for each wall surface, something Unreal will use to help place final textures. Cover all surfaces of the walls, not just the ones facing inward. This will cause less issues in Unreal Engine. Finally, we export the model. Now, if you're using the Pro version of SketchUp, you can export directly to FBX. For those of you working with the free version, SketchUp Make, here's a workaround. Export as a Collada file with a .dae extension. Then go and download yourself a copy of the open source and highly capable Blender 3D content creation software from blender.org. When you launch Blender, ignore all the tempting buttons and tabs and just select the default cube at the middle of the 3D view. Press the forward delete key, that's function delete on Mac laptops, and confirm. Now head straight to the file menu and choose Import Collada. Find your model and double click to import. Now simply select File Export FBX. Choose a directory, a file name, 
and click Export FBX. Done. And that's it. Now it's time to take your model into Unreal and start blocking out your shots. But that's a story for the next video in the series.